Hey, if you're new around here, there's something really important I have to get out the way first. A huge disclaimer. I do not believe that any of the games on this video today are bad games. Actually, I would go as far as to say they are all perfectly fine, acceptable video games that you might actually like. However, they are video games that for some reason or another, Eh, it disappointed me a tiny little bit a lot. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about him right now. I typically don't ever review games badly. That's not to say that I lie and I pretend that every game is freaking amazing and I love it no matter what. I just, if there's a video game I don't like, I typically just don't talk about it. And I do that for a couple reasons. One, someone or some people have worked really hard on a thing and then for me, some random Joe Schmo from the internet to come along and be like, nah, it's bad. I don't really feel qualified to do that. But hey, sometimes I do hype up video games a lot and then I end up being disappointed by them and I feel like it's somewhat of a responsibility of mine to be like, well, I didn't really like it after all. <laughs> but the other reason I don't do it, and I would say the main reason I don't do it, is because video games are subjective. I could easily dislike something that you absolutely love. I relate it to, like, music. So I try not to make videos like this as much as possible. So smash like on this video if you enjoy it, or just anyway, please. And <laughs> flip on that subscribe button. Let's start with what might end up being the most controversial game on this list, the Dead Dead the Dead the Dead Dead by Daylight. I know this game has a hardcore community following, and I really don't want to go stepping on any toes, especially as someone who has just walked into this game realized it's not really what they thought they wanted and stepped straight back out again. And the reason why I thought it was gonna be a certain way is because, I'm gonna say it, I played so much Friday the 13th. And I kind of thought that they were similar games because at the ground floor, their concepts are very similar. But when it comes to their execution, they're both very, very, very different. And I just don't prefer the execution here. Not because it's bad. So the premise of this game, and also Friday the 13th, is <laughs> that there is a killer on the loose trying to kill you and your cohorts. And you have to work together as best you can to outwit, outmatch, and hopefully survive the killer. Unless you are the killer, in which case, it's the opposite of that. Kill everyone, kill them all dead. <laughs> okay, let's start with the positives in this game, because there, there, there is some. <laughs> to start with, Dead by Daylight has a cast of different bad guy killers that you can play as, and I really do like that. If for nothing else, it just adds variety, not only to your playthrough if you are the killer, obviously, because you can do some vastly different things as each different killer, but for the survivors, because it changes how they have to play each match depending on who's trying to kill them. The second advantage of Dead by Daylight is it's actually a lot easier to hide from the killer. If you're strategic enough and you're careful enough, you can outsmart the killer. And I like that. But in Friday the 13th, he's like super powered, can sense you through walls and no matter where you are, it's, it almost seems impossible at times. And the third advantage this game has over Friday is that it actually has a freaking lobby system, which is my biggest complaint with Friday on the Switch. You can't get in matches with your friends unless you really, really freaking try. But unfortunately, this is where the disadvantages start coming in. And again, this is all personal preference. How many times do I have to say that? But what is the point of having a lobby system to play with your friends if there's no voice chat. If nothing else, this is the only big thing that actually disappoints me and I think is an oversight. And the developers have said that they don't want to add a voice chat because it would ruin the survivor experience. And I don't get that. There's something so inherently fun about loading up a game of Friday the 13th with seven other people. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. And being just left in the woods with people and there's proximity chat. So if you actually manage to find another survivor, you can talk to them and plan with them and organize escape plans or just stick together and get to know each other and learn a little bit about each other and there's just so much fun that can be had there but it's just not here it's just silent online there is a killer chasing me on the loose i'm next to someone the killer is there i can't at least like scream <laughs> and let this person know that i'm scared also on the flip side i like uh, i'm so sorry in friday when i'm playing as jason and i walk up to survivors trying to plan their escape and i hear them talking about you go get the battery in the car i have the gas and then i you know walk to the car because i know that's where they're going. <laughs> and it's also really funny to hear them be like, shh, shh, oh, Jason's here. <laughs> the next thing that I thought was a disadvantage to begin with, but I've kind of come around on it now because I've realized why it th it's the way it is. There's only one way to escape in this game. You repair the generators, you repair a certain amount, I believe it's five, and then a door opens or you open a door and you can leave. Once I had for the first time in Dead by Daylight fixed all the generators and gotten the heck out of town, 
I felt like I'd beaten the game. But here's what I realized between the two. And I have compared them so much to get to this point. This game, it isn't about random ways to escape. It isn't about, oh, you can do this, 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 or this, and you never know what's going to happen each time. There's a specific way of doing things. And that's why the community is so strong. I feel and so passionate because they know how to play this game. Because there is a way to play this game. In Friday, there's no way to play the game. You play the game. You either have fun or you don't, screaming like a headless chicken because Jason's coming to kill you. In fact, if I'm playing with seven other people in Friday and one of them decides to go for an evening swim and gets themselves killed, it's literally no skin off my back. But in Dead by Daylight, you need as many people as possible and you need everyone to play a certain way. I kind of relate it to like League of Legends or Dota where if I was to just start playing fresh faces at level one and sucking, I would cost my entire team the game and they would get very mad at me because the community is passionate and they're very very vocal about that and that's when i kind of started to change my thinking about this game and i realized it's not so much a fun light-hearted game like friday the 13th somehow ends up being so if you're looking for a more serious take on being hunted down by a killer struggling for survival i recommend dead by daylight hey i offended one community of people already why not just go for the jugular with another massive community of people yeah i wasn't sure if i was ever going to talk about this one. I was really excited for it. Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission. It did, just didn't pan out the way I thought it was going to. The impression I got was that it was a new Dragon Ball game based around card gameplay. But it turns out this game's actually like 10 years old. And it's a whole series of games that up until now have been localized to Japan. In fact, it started as an arcade game and this is the arcade game, and it shows because the game feels very dated. We have a lot of fantastic looking and playing Dragon Ball games on the Switch right now, so to be playing this, which honestly looks like a... But of course, end of the day, visuals to me take a backseat if the game is actually fun to play. And the game is fun to play. Let's get into that. So as I said, it's a card-based game. And the one thing I really love about this game is there's like a thousand cards to collect. You have 300 different heroes, and obviously some heroes have multiple different cards. And by using a getcha, gotcha, getcha, getcha, gotcha, getcha machine, you can randomize packs of cards that come out, and you never know what you're going to get. And I really love that they kind of just throw tickets at you to use this machine too. After every single battle you have, you'll get a bunch of tickets to go and get new cards. So you're always finding new characters to add to your repertoire. I like saying that word, and I probably said it wrong. You can even customize your own cards. So if there's a hero that you really want, but you haven't found them yet, just make it yourself. <laughs> there are so many options in regards to customization and what you can do when building your decks of characters. But then you stop playing the game. And I, this is the point where I kind of lost interest, even though I finished the story. So the story's about 30 hours long. So you play the game with your deck of characters. You have seven and your opponent will most likely also have seven. You have these different lanes on the field. The lane closest to you is like a rest lane where they'll recharge stamina so they can get back in the fight. And depending on where you move your characters on the field, each turn will depend on what they do, both individually and sometimes even together. And there's a load of strategy that goes into this. Not only in watching what your opponent is doing and planning in advance for that, but planning in advance with your own characters and managing their stamina levels and making sure you send the right ones out at the right time and then pull the right ones back at the right time. But herein lies my biggest issue with the game. It's really easy and I was looking for a challenge here and I just didn't find one. The reason why I feel like it's so easy, when it comes to making your move when you've placed all your characters, they'll have a little battle animation and most of the time you'll get this little bar come up on your screen and you have to press a button at the right time to maximize the bar out as much as you can. I would be fine with it if it was just a matter of boosting my attack or boosting my defense in that moment, but it's actually not. It's actually a direct competition with the other player who's doing the same thing at the same time. So if you go to launch your special super attack that you've placed all your cards to do, but then your opponent just so happens to stop the bar a little higher than you, it will deflect it and it'll dodge that move and it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't even happen. Everything you set up will just kind of fall flat. Vice versa, of course, when they go to attack, you have a chance of defending it. And a lot of battles will end up coming down to who pressed it at the right time. But for example, for me in a card game, if two equal decks went against each other, the winner should be the person who just played the cards better. But rather than that, it more comes down to who's better at timing a button press in that case. So I tried playing online instead since everything I was finding within the game a little too easy and I was just getting smoked online. <laughs> 
<laughs> so there is something to be said for decks that are stacked with way more powerful cards and you can't just win at a button press. But again, I go back to the analogy of two equal decks. And I really don't want to think that all my strategic efforts end up coming down to my hand-eye coordination. Is it a good game at the end of the day? Yes, as I said. A lot of effort went into it just in the customization alone and there's a lot of fun to be had in that side of the game. And I had a lot of fun in that side of the game. Just overall, I have no reason to go back to it. I'm not disappointing. Wolfenstein Youngblood. Out of every game on this list, I'm actually way more inclined to be a lot harsher on this one and a lot more unapologetic about it too. So I bought it on Xbox for a lot of you could probably guess by now to play with my friend back home in Australia and also because I really like 4K HDR. But we were really excited to play this because we are both huge fans of the new Wolfenstein games. And when we heard they were making this, we got really excited because we assumed it was going to be, albeit maybe a watered down version of Wolfenstein 2, but that game just with a different story, this time playing as BJ's two twin daughters, but essentially just that game in co-op. Just a little downscaled maybe. But instead, we didn't get that at all. <laughs> And the worst part is, I do feel like we were all misled. Because naturally, when you see something like this, you do think it's going to be a continuation of the last game, even if it is downscaled. But instead, they just flipped it up on its head and made something that was, in my opinion, a lot less effort. Did y'all ever play Division or like an action MMO type game like that, where you have like your hub world with NPC characters you can talk to, and then they give you missions and you go out and it's the same world every time. You just, you just do different things and then you come back and you get more missions. That's what this game was. There's like a tiny, teensy tiny bit of story right at the start of the game to set it up. And then you get to the hub world and that's it. Now here's your game and you spend the next 20 hours going trudging through the same areas you've been to a billion times until you finally get to the end. You know how in the trailer of the game it told you that you play as the twin sisters and you have to find BJ? Well don't wonder about what else happens in the game because that's it. <laughs> it starts with you being told to find him and it ends with you, so oh surprise, spoiler alert, finding him. There's very few open areas in this game you get to explore and then they kind of just lead into new areas once in a while, but for the most part you find yourself going back through the same couple areas. The worst part is the enemies respawn every time and scale to your level. I will say the gameplay at its core on your side of the fence when it comes to your gameplay and the abilities you have are all improved greatly. It actually feels a lot better than the last game but sadly the gameplay on the other side of the fence as in the AIs was made so much worse. In Wolfenstein 2 you had some options. You could stealth everyone if you wanted and if you didn't want to you could just start going for headshots. You can't do that in this game because every enemy has health bars. Headshots won't do you no good. I mean, they'll do a little bit more damage, but you're still gonna have to shoot them a bunch. And stealth is right out the window. Even though I played as the freaking stealth character, you could maybe get away with stealthing a couple enemies, but there's so many enemies in every area that just seem to see you or your sister no matter what, that you'll constantly just have bullets flying at your face. Throughout the entire game, and the NPC hub world was so pointless. The NPCs didn't actually do anything. You couldn't buy weapons from them, you couldn't talk to them, they weren't in involved in any way unless they were giving you quests and you only get like a few quests at a time and they all push the story along and once you've done those you go and get more so you're constantly going back and forward and back and forward you can fast travel back to the hub world and i'm not talking like grayed out and you can't click it i mean it's not there if there's enemies nearby it just won't say it and there's always enemies nearby so for the first 75 percent of the game we assumed there was no fast travel and then just randomly at one point once we had killed everything i paused it to go get a drink i came back and i saw fast travel and i was like we're on the last mission, man. I couldn't have seen this sooner. So the game definitely isn't without its faults. In fact, the only missions we had fun were the raid missions, and there was only three of them. Oh, I will, okay, let me calm down. The game looks fantastic. Again, I played it in 4K. If you're playing it on Xbox, the game looks incredible. I will say about the Switch port, it runs just like Wolfenstein 2, ported by Panic Button on the Switch, and it's it's super smooth. If anything, it's kind of cooler on the Switch because there's no MMO online co-op style games quite like this on Switch. I was disappointed in Wolfenstein, I think more than anything, because they set it up to look like, and they marketed it to be a very story-driven game, linear game, mind you, just like Wolfenstein 2, and then when you actually get to playing it, it's kind of 
have just a chore to play. Hey, I don't love losing subscribers, so I'm gonna keep this one pretty short. <laughs> Talking badly about a Nintendo Switch exclusive game, especially one that also has a diehard community of mech fans, I really picked some rough games to trash in this video. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm gonna talk about it because you guys want me to, and because I do have an opinion on it, but I do wanna say the reason why I wasn't going to, or I was even considering not getting the game is because I don't like mech games. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> mech game or not, I don't feel like it hit the mark. A lot of the people I've seen that love this game, they say that for a mech game, it gave them everything they've been wanting from a mech game in forever. And I guess I just don't see it because I'm not a mech fan. I've tried other mech games, I can never really just get into them, but I still was excited to play this game. Not just because it was a Nintendo Switch exclusive, and so far I don't think Nintendo's put out an exclusive game that didn't hit the mark. The trailers hyped it up, right? Rightfully so, but it seemed very story heavy and it, it's not really. In fact, the game just kind of starts and plops you into this world and then you get this terminal that you can start approaching and just selecting missions. You might get some text bubbles here and there of characters talking before missions, but that's about it. Then you go into the mission, you do a little bit of shooty bang bang and then you leave the mission and if you didn't cause too much damage and you actually did a pretty good job, you get some credits. Then you roll into the next mission. The odd times here and there that you actually do get cutscenes with animated characters, they're actually anything but animated. In my, what I did, they, they just kind of stand there, they don't really do much. And then we get to the actual gameplay itself and there were so many issues with the demo and I do have to say to their credit, they fixed a lot and they improved a lot, but it still isn't perfect. I really feel like with this game, no matter what weapon you're using, one or two things is gonna happen. One, it's going to essentially auto lock and hit no matter what. What. Or two, it's gonna miss and you don't know why it missed. It doesn't really feel like there's that much precision or even skill when it comes to actually firing at enemies. And maybe I'm missing something, but also the AI doesn't really present much of a challenge. And I think if I was ever to fully enjoy a mech game, it would be a mech game. Well, you know what? One I really did like did exactly what I'm about to say perfectly now that I think about it. It's not really completely a mech game. Titanfall, but bear with me <laughs> because I want to feel like I'm in this huge mech and I'm like a threat I'm a menace of some kind and I want to feel like I'm stepping into this thing and grabbing on a stuff And even if I'm not actually doing it, and I'm just controlling it I want to feel the weight behind it I want to feel myself take off in this giant mech and feel almost indestructible But in these small little areas they create for you to play in it just feels so small scale And even my mech just feels kind of teensy tiny almost like a toy kind of just going around going pew 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 and maybe that's what mech games are maybe i am completely missing the mark with this one and you can let me know down below but if that is what they are i think that's just why i don't enjoy them i know this one does have a pretty hardcore following of people that love the game i, I do feel bad obviously because i know people love it but it did get pretty mixed average and low reviews and i feel like the 7 out of 10 that it's sat at right now on things like metacritic uh appropriate. I do feel like it's a 7 out of 10. I feel like it does bring some things to the table. It does have elements to it that are fun, but for the most part, it missed the mark on many things, and I think the biggest thing is that I just can't get invested. Please don't hate me for my opinions and my personal preferences when it comes to a video game. I don't think any of them are shining examples of what games in these genres need or should be, but they are games that do what they set out to do. And they're fine. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you managed to still enjoy this video, and I really hope you did, make sure you hey, flip all over that subscribe button. Sakurai Super Smash that like button. Oh, thanks to today's sponsor. Click links down below.